This video is the last in the series to focus so heavily on contour lines. Learning about contour lines is a slog, but they're the foundation for understanding topographic maps, so I've spent a lot of time discussing them. The good news is, we're over the hump. In this video, I'll do a quick review. Then I'll close by discussing the most important limitation of contour maps. By the time you've watched all four videos, and after a little outdoor practice, you should be ready to interpret contour maps by yourself. This map segment shows Williams Lake near Taos. It's surrounded by alpine peaks, including Wheeler Peak, the highest point in New Mexico. First, I'll figure out the contour interval directly from the map. I'll use this pair of index contour lines. The two index contour lines represent a 200-foot change from 11,200 feet to 11,400 feet. The two index contour lines are the standard five contour lines apart. 200 divided by 5 equals 40, so the contour interval on this map is 40 feet. Williams Lake is inside contour lines with tick lines. That means that Williams Lake is nestled in a depression. Here's what Williams Lake looks like. You can see that it's small. I haven't discussed map scales yet, but that's coming soon. When a contour line bends out from higher terrain, that's a ridge. Here the arrow is pointing down the top of a ridge, which extends off a higher north-south ridge. And here's the arrow superimposed on the actual ridge. When contour lines bend into higher terrain, that's a valley. Here the arrow is pointing up a valley. Here's the arrow superimposed on the valley. As I discussed in the previous video, this arrow is pointing to a knoll with an elevation of 11,224 feet. The X indicates a permanent survey marker. If you find that marker, you'll know exactly where you are on the map. The knoll is about here. You might not know to look for it if you didn't have the map. The tip of this arrow is at a saddle between Lake Fork Peak and the lower peak just north of it. The saddle is here. Looking at this spot from across the valley, you might think that it's a gently sloping ridge line, not a saddle. But thanks to the map, you know the saddle is there. Let's look at a different kind of terrain, specifically the south end of Mesa Portales near Cuba, New Mexico. All those mashed together contour lines suggest a cliff, or at least very steep slopes. Here's what that end of Mesa Portales looks like. Here's a closer view of the east side of the mesa. The mesa sides aren't monolithic cliffs because the rock is too soft, but in most places the side is too steep to let you scramble to the top. The south end of the mesa is cut by a short steep valley that drains to the south, as indicated by the blue arrow. You can tell it's a valley because the contours bend into higher terrain. Once you're on top of the mesa, there are multiple shallow interior valleys that drain more or less north. Again, you can tell they're valleys because the contour lines bend into higher terrain. Here's what one of those shallow interior valleys looks like. The high point of the mesa is indicated by the red arrow. There's an X on the map, so you should find a permanent marker at the high point. You can also see an elevation value, 7,437 feet. The high point on the mesa is about here. And here's the view from the top of the mesa, next to the high point. The question I often get at a place like this is, how far up are we? Let's find out. Based on these two index contour lines, the base of the mesa is just above 7,000 feet, and the top of the mesa is just above 7,400 feet. In other words, the viewpoint is about 400 feet above the surrounding countryside. Before we move on to the next video in the series, I need to bring up the most important limitation of contour lines. I can explain the problem by going back to this diagram. The top drawing shows the profile of a ridge you'd like to traverse. The bottom drawing is a contour map of the ridge, with your planned route as a dashed red line. The contour interval is 100 feet. When you traverse the ridge, you'll encounter three peaks, but on the contour map there are only two obvious peaks as indicated by inner loops. That could confuse you about your location on the ridge. The problem is that the peak on the left doesn't push up far enough to register as a separate closed loop. The peak is there, but it's invisible on this contour map. Similar problem with the saddles. As you traverse the ridge, you'll encounter two saddles, but there's only one obvious saddle on the map. 
The other saddle doesn't drop far enough to register as a low spot between two peaks. Again, if you're counting topographic features as you traverse the ridge, you could easily get out of whack with your topo map. The problem can be far worse than mild confusion about where you are. The profile tells you that there's roughly a 60-foot cliff near the right end of the ridge. The cliff is invisible on the topo map because it falls entirely within the 100-foot interval between two contour lines. A hiker traversing the ridge will have to turn back at the cliff. It's helpful when a topo map warns you that your planned route is impractical, but in this case, it doesn't. The problem has to do with the size of the contour interval. Take this map segment, for example. The contour interval is 20 meters, which is 66 feet. At the center of the map segment is a low east-west ridge in the middle of the Rio Puerco Valley. With the 66-foot contour interval, you can tell that the ridge is there, and you might guess that the top is flat, but you can't see anything else. Here's the same ridge on a map with a 20-foot contour interval, about one-third the previous interval. Now you can verify that the top is almost flat, but you can also see that the high point is at the west end. The sides of the ridge look steep because the contour lines are bunched up. Finally, you can see that on the north side of the ridge, there's a place where the contour lines spread out a little, indicating that the slope is gentler there. If you want to get on top of the ridge, you might make your first attempt from the north side. On a map with large contour intervals, important topographic details may be missing. Instead, use a map with a small contour interval so the details show up. This is why most topo maps have so many contour lines that at first they're more confusing than helpful. Once you know the language of contour lines, you'll appreciate the details those extra contour lines provide. <laughs>